Okay, so let's get it rolling. This is your Tuesday's edition of Business Morning. We're live to you from Channel's global headquarters at Nigeria's Financial Economic Center. That's Lagos. Let's uh, get the show started today. I am boosting them off. And we're getting started. What is making the news? Uh, of course, the bankers, microfinance banks. One of the stories over the weekend, last weekend that was, was that there's going to be a new microfinance bank. So we've got a few of these areas to clarify for our viewers. And of course, the social media has been really heavy about it. So what do we know in terms of how this bank will be, who is going to own it, how is it going to operate moving forward? These are some of the clarifications uh, for, and for our viewers here and around the world who's been waiting for this. This is what we know at the moment. The new microfinance bank, which was announced last weekend at the Bankers Committee Retreat, is to be a limited liability company and will be duly registered under the relevant provisions of the companies of the Corporate Affairs Commission and, of course, the Companies and Allied Matters Act. It will also be licensed by the Central Bank of Nigeria as a microfinance bank, a national microfinance bank. That's the license that this will get. Now, what this means is that there will be three major shareholders of the new national microfinance bank. It's called National, not because that has been the name when it gets started, so we need to clear that. Uh, it's just called National because it's going to have a national license. So being called a National Microfinance Bank, does not mean it's going to be owned, and it's not owned by the federal government or, 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 or by the Buhari's administration. It's going to have a majority shareholding by all Nigerian banks, uh, and we'll explain that in, in a moment. Why is it that Nigerian banks, all of them, uh, the owners of the new microfinance bank, uh, a minority shareholding will be held by the Central Bank of Nigeria. And of course, and we'll explain why that is also there. And of course, by NIPOST. Uh, the funding which has been talked about, which the Central Bank Governor, Godwin Emefele, talked about over the weekend, the five billion naira will be taken from the Agri and Small Medium Enterprises Fund, which is domiciled with the Central Bank. This is what happens. The last two years, banks have started contributing a percentage of their profit into a special fund that was domiciled with the central bank for onward lending into agri and small and medium enterprises. So that money now has a balance of about 60 billion naira. So out of that 60 billion naira is where the 5 billion naira will be taken as the seed capital for the new microfinance bank, which will be run by all the banks in Nigeria. At the end of this year, the amount in that uh, Agri and SME's funds will be about 90 billion naira, according to competent sources talking to Business Morning uh, late yesterday uh, evening. So the Central Bank of Nigeria is not injecting any fund or a dime into the new microfinance bank. The Central Bank will play its usual role of a regulator and a supervisor of the new microfinance bank, which the Bankers Committee of Nigeria has decided to set up. So this was a decision of the Bankers Committee and not that of the Buhari's administration, nor the central bank. The idea is simple. The bankers themselves find that it's difficult to get funds into the hands of small and micro entrepreneurs. So now they want to do something with their own system and within their own institution, which is the new microfinance bank. So how will it work? The transaction windows, how would you get this fund if you're a micro, uh, micro business? Uh, how will you get it? Uh, you will be getting this money through the hundreds of night post offices where the microfinance bank will have a window uh, from where you can transact uh, uh, this business of micro lending. The disbursement will not be much of cash, and that's what we were told late yesterday evening. It's going to be more of an electronic wallet. So for those who have very uh, uh, nasty ideas, thinking they will rob those night post uh, offices, you're not going to get any much cash in there. Of course, Sossi said no cash, uh, heavy cash will be uh, domiciled there for anyone to play with. So it's going to be essentially an electronic wallet. It's to allow financial inclusion. These offices, which will be like branch offices for the microfinance bank across the night post offices, would also be used to dispense anchor borrowers program, which currently goes through the normal commercial banks. We now have a special window where the farmers and others within the value chain can go across the country 
and get their funds. The loans will be disbursed at lower interest rates of single digits. Uh, the highest, according to sources, will be the lower end of uh, double digits. That's about 10%. So we hope that clarifies things a little bit. Uh, more as uh, clarity we get, we'll let you have it. So let's talk about uh, the foreign trade third quarter reports, which came out 5 p.m. yesterday, of course, which got a little bit uh, overweighted by the GDP that came out earlier. So what are the details? Uh, let's just uh, get that up for you to look at the highlights of the uh, foreign trade, what you call foreign trading goods, or what you call trade balance report. What's the trade balance for third quarter? This is uh, August. Uh, sorry, July, August, and September. That's the third quarter. You know that already. Uh, we had a balance of 681.72 billion, uh, 27 billion naira. If you balance our import over our exports, but how did it all stack up? Uh, give us a minute or two to to run this down, folks, uh, and and you can take note. Uh, total imports. We imported a total of goods what 4.172 trillion naira in the third quarter. That's up 73.8 percent over the second quarter of this year, because according to the uh, National Bureau of Statistics, we imported submersible drilling platforms in August, in the month of August, which was within the third quarter. Uh, submersible uh, drilling platforms are what the oil companies use to drill hydrocarbon, what's called oil and gas. So the statistics office says this took a large chunk of our uh, imports within the third quarter. Our total imports was also higher. 67.7% compared to import value of the same quarter last year. Of course, that's already explained. Look at the flip side, which is the total exports. Uh, we exported 4.853 trillion naira worth of goods. That's 7.8% over the second quarter and 35.7% uh, uh, over the third quarter of uh, last year. The total trade came in at 9.03 trillion naira. You just uh, you can do your math there. Well, I'm going to do that will be in dollar terms. Uh, break it down into sectors. Now you have agriculture. Our imports in the third quarter was down 0.1%. How much value of aggregate exports did we do? It fell 47.2% over the second quarter. So we imported far, we exported far less agricultural products in third quarter, 47.2%, much lower than we did. So we did poorly in agriculture in, in, in third quarter, uh, simple English. Raw materials, our uh, imports were up 11.67%. Our exports was higher 1.63%. In terms of solid minerals, we also did poorly. Imports was up 0.8% quarter on quarter, while our exports value was down 51.9% against second quarter. So as far as solid minerals we had, we were in the water in the second quarter, negative. Uh, it was down. Energy goods, was imports was also down 90.4%. Uh, that was good. But our export value was down 6.04%. In terms of manufactured goods, uh, we didn't do well also. Our import value was up 122.97%. In terms of import, our export value was down 5.9% in third quarter.